Hello, students. Congratulations on your NEET results, which you have received. You know, whenever the results of NEET come up, I always come across students of two different types. You have a single first type of student who have achieved whatever their expectations, who have got the results what they wanted, and are now deciding which colleges to choose for. On the other hand, we also come across students who have scored below par, scored below their level of expectations. Now, the second type of students, students who have not achieved the scores which they intended to, have two different types of directions, two different choices to make. The first choice, what they have to, well, the first direction, what they may think of is to compromise on the type of colleges they select or compromise on the stream of career, stream of choice they select. The second direction, which a lot of students think about is giving another attempt, taking another shot at this neat entrance examination. Today's discussion would basically help you to answer that question. Today's discussion, what we're gonna do is discuss and help in the decision about should you repeat your NEET examination. Mind you, repeating an examination is something which is not uh, unique only to NEET. It is unique to many entrance examinations, even UPSC or CAT or JE for that matter also. Of course, our discussion would be pertaining to students who are planning to repeat NEET. Now, who should repeat? Which kind of students should repeat? If you belong to these following categories, it would help you to decide whether you should repeat or no. For this year, that is 2020-20, you 2020 rather, you'd find there is a new group of students who actually scored badly in the NEET examination because of the lockdown effect, because of the postponement of examination. So if you're a student who actually studied well, who was very sincere throughout that one and a half year, but because of extension and extension, because of new dates coming up every month, and because of the lockdown effect, you lost your tempo, you lost your um, speed and your rhythm, and that is the reason why you couldn't fare up to your expectation, then yes, you can think of repeating. Another type of students who can actually think of repeating are students who got lower scores because of weakness in one particular subject. Students who had good grip in two subjects but lost out on the third subject. For example, students who did well in their chemistry and biology, but scored poorly in physics, or students who scored good in physics and chemistry, lost out in biology, or students who did good in physics and biology, lost out in chemistry. If you are the student who has a single subject weakness, then you can think of repeating. Or you are a student who had section weakness, for example, if you're a student who had a problem in, you know, the, uh, in imagine in, in the, in the uh, electronics part of physics or people who had uh, pro the remaining part of physics was strong, but let's say electronics or uh, modern physics was weak or a student who had problems in physical chemistry, you know, the, uh, everything else in chemistry was fine, but physical chemistry was a problem in, uh, or a student who said that, okay, I'm fine with the entire biology, but genetics was my weakness and that pulled me down. So either if you're a student who has a single subject weakness or you're a student who has section weakness in all the three subjects, then you can also think of repeating. The third type of students who can think of repeating again are the middle scorers. If you're a high scorer, of course, there is no need to repeat because you're going to get the desired choices but you are a student who's scoring in the range of 350, 400, 450. And because of that, you just miss, missed out uh, of these cutoffs, then you should definitely be thinking about repeating. One last category of students who, who should repeat 
is people who are very sincere this you also get a lot of students who face that who were very sincere throughout the year who did everything right but on the day of the exam they got nervous they goofed up they got you know they made a blunder they mismarked they left a few questions they got blanked out and because of that they couldn't complete their paper these are the ones who can also think of repeating so people who lost their tempo because of lockdown people who have single subject weakness or sectional weaknesses in the individual subjects people who were middle scorers and people who actually lost out because of screwing up in the exam day the throughout the two years or one and a half year they were good they did their work well but on the day of exam which is can happen sometimes you goofed up you couldn't um, you know go for the kill and these are the kids you should be thinking about repeating who should not repeat the year people who are actually taking up this just because of parental pressure if you're a student who is deciding to repeat neat because your parents are pushing you for doing it then you shouldn't go ahead with it because you would not be giving your 100% only and only you should be the deciding factor you should be the decision maker in deciding whether you would want to repeat if you're aiming for a private medical college to repeat the year i wouldn't advise you to repeat it because if you're aiming for a better private medical college so if you're a student who says that i would want to improve my score slightly so that i can get to a better private medical college i would say you shouldn't be aiming for that and of course if you're a low scorer if you're scoring in the range of 150 200 even 250 for that matter you know for 250 out of 7 20 then i don't think you should be attempting to repeat this is my opinion because from 250 a big jump to about 600 is something which is not normally expected i'm not saying it is an impossible thing i'm not saying it has never happened but it's something which is not that common so if you are a low scorer in your neat examination then i you would want to reconsider the decision of repeating now once you've decided that you want to repeat if you have decided what you want that you want to repeat what are the targets which you would be looking at if you are planning to repeat you should be targeting a 630 or a minimum 600 plus score a person who is planning to repeat should be basically planning to go for a minimum 600 plus score or at the best or, or, or rather i would say not at the best a better higher aim of 630 plus scores you know the basic aim of every person who is repeating is to target a government medical college a good government medical college if you are not having these two targets of 630 plus scores if you are not targeting a government medical college then you shouldn't be thinking of repeating so all those people who want to repeat should be the ones who should be targeting minimum 600 plus scores and of course you know aiming higher of 630 plus scores and also definitely looking for government medical college and that's why i told you that you know if you're looking at a private medical college uh, as your aim to repeat i wouldn't recommend to do those if you've decided that you're going to repeat then what are the common pitfalls what are the common mistakes which students do which basically stops them which basically can lead to problems in your attempts the first and the most important problem or the uh, pitfall or the mistake which students repeat is that they get bored boredom is one of the biggest problem in people who repeat it because you're going to re- revise and study the same portion all over again and mind you this boredom which i'm talking of is just for the first 15 days So when you start repeating generally when you start studying the first chapter again you know picking up the book again starting to study EMI and starting to practice those numericals again starting to read the thermodynamics again revising you know chapters like morphology again the initial few days can get boring and that's the tip for students who want to repeat if you overcome the first 15 20 days of boredom then there is no stopping you So all those students who plan to repeat always look at it 
that you overcome the first few days ka boredom if you can do that then you would always be able to score better because once you start getting the rhythm once you start getting the hang of it and once you start giving those tests you'll automatically find your performance would be better as compared to last year because you are repeating because you are revising them again and you get the confidence back so for all students who plan to repeat i always recommend that try to overcome fight the boredom for the first 15 days to maximum one month once you come across the, those days then you get your rhythm back and i promise you you would definitely get your rhythm back the second issue which always you should avoid is the usage of phone the usage of social media if you are an addict of social media if you're an addict of phones if you're an addict an addict of gaming then you shouldn't be thinking of repeating any student who repeats should make a conscious decision of discarding the phone discarding all your social media accounts for the next one to one and a half year if you are willing to do that sacrifice of not touching your phone not accessing your social media if you are willing to give up your smartphones then only you should think of repeating otherwise you would not be gaining much from repeating the year a third mistake which commonly i find a lot of students think of is that they say that i would continue with my bsc and simultaneously plan to repeat one thing is very important that if you are planning to repeat you have to give your 100% and if you want to give your 100% you can't be a part time repeater so always remember that the day you decide that you want to repeat you will have to quit from all the other courses you are going for in short you you always have to be a full time student you can't be a part time repeater that is something which is very important to understand and the common mistake which a lot of students do is they actually decide that they will repeat and they decide that they will make their two subjects like chemistry and biology stronger and keep the uh, other subject uh, you know uh, not focus on the other subject this is generally true for students who got low scores because of being weak in physics if you are weak in physics and because of that you have lost your mark and when you plan to repeat you cannot ignore physics you cannot ignore chemistry if you are weak in chemistry you cannot you know ignore a subject and overcompensate on the other subject there are a lot of students who basically would they plan that okay i'm weak in physics let me be very good in biology let me be very good in chemistry and by being very good in chemistry by being very good in biology i will be able to make up for the loss of marks in physics that's a wrong approach because whatever you do you cannot compensate the marks lost by physics uh, you know with biology or with chemistry if you are repeating you have to see to it that all your three subjects are strong so the day you decide you want to repeat make a list of all the topics what you are weak in be very truthful be very honest in this analysis make a list of all the chapters whether it is in physics whether it's in chemistry whether it's in biology make a list of chapters which you are weak in make a list of chapters you are moderate in and make a list of chapters which you are strong in so whenever you plan to repeat the very first day you should make a list of the chapters in three different categories i'm talking of all three subjects physics chemistry biology you make three different categories weak subject weak chapters moderate chapters and strong chapters your aim during this repeat year is to see to it that initially all your weak chapters become your moderate chapters and eventually all your moderate chapters become your strong chapters in short you have to see to it that by the end of the year you would have zero chapters in the column of weak zero chapters in the column of moderate and all the chapters of physics and chemistry should be in the strong column that should be the plan for repeating the year how do i make those subjects stronger what would be the method to improve these subjects i would give very small tips for each of the subjects for physics you have to see to it 
that you will be you should be able to solve the numericals but not only solve the numericals you should be able to do so in considerable speed people lose out in physics because they know the stuff they don't know how to apply them they know their concepts they don't know how to apply them they can solve numericals but they can't solve it faster so improving your numericals and improving your speed improving your application skills and also improving your speed is the key to getting good scores in physics chemistry apart from knowing your numericals you should be very very thorough with facts a lot of the students focus on numericals lose out on facts you also have factual questions which come in chemistry which which are very easy to score if you are thorough with so see to it that in chemistry apart from of course your organic reactions and your conversions you should be very thorough in your numerical speed and also know your facts biology there is only ncert 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 if you want to score good in biology you should be thorough with your ncert you can't compromise your ncert textbook you sleep with it you eat it you drink it you actually see to it that every word of the textbook is in your blood is actually flowing through you then you will be aiming at getting a good score so these are the three criteria basically which you should be utilizing here very important thing for students who are planning to repeat in 2021 is you have a short span you would have on an average around 6 months if neat is in may we are currently in november so you have uh, you know december and then you have 5 months so you are on an average you have 6 months with you to plan your repeat year mind you it's in a way also good this is because since it's 6 to 7 years and since very recently just in september itself you've given your neat a lot of the stuff what you've studied is fresh you already have the momentum so this year since you will have around 6 to 7 months to prepare i would consider that as an advantage i would consider that as something which would be important because you already have the momentum of your studies you just carry forward that momentum and see to it that you uh, achieve your improvement in your 2021 attempt you know for all students who plan to repeat uh, i have a favorite quote which i tell all of my students also that the day you plan to repeat this should be your mantra you should repeat the year but do not repeat your mistakes so if you plan to repeat one thing you should be doing is make a list of all the things which you did wrong make a list of all the mistakes you made whether it's mistakes in your subject wise preparation mistakes in your uh, planning in your time management whether you were too much into your phones whether you were too much into your social media whether you ignored your physics numericals or whether you ignored your chemistry reactions or whether you ignored physical chemistry or did you ignore your genetics in biology if you know the list of the mistakes which you made last year you see to it that these mistakes are not repeated and of course new mistakes are not made if you can manage to do that then repeating the year is always beneficial and will always help you to achieve the target college and help you to get into the desired medical college of your choice so this basically is the basic overview i hope this would help you to make a decision about your repeat attempts so that's it for today thank you